I guess it was a month ago when someone brought up, it may have been Bob Strickland, about using uh, photo reflector umbrellas for radio telescopes. And uh, that seemed like a really great idea. And so I, I've been pursuing this over the past couple of weeks. And so the idea was, well, let's see, how come that's not? Yeah, was to see if I could come up with something that was on the scale or lighter than the scope and the box system. Try to keep the price down, but to maybe but to optimize the performance of something that is actually tuned to a, a 21 centimeter and here's the problem so i tried uh i bought a bunch of these i bought four different brands and each one had a different type of reflective material and one was probably bright enough you probably could have cooked hot dogs in the sun off of it and they all worked really well with daylight the problem is at 21 centimeters the reflective material just basically disappears. Um, I held up the, uh, I took my uh, dish, my loop feed and put it on the, uh, the, the VNA analyzer. And as I brought the reflective material near the, the loop, it detuned it. So I thought, okay, it must have some kind of, of useful RF properties, but it didn't. I just put it outside, and the only thing I measured was the uh, the temperature of the ground. So that started a big project. This is like, what can I do? Well, I tried putting up some aluminum foil. That was just nasty. That was something that no one would ever want to try to do. And the the goal of this was to, is to build something that maybe someone else would want a a, a scope in the box ish type thing, and that wasn't it. I don't know how I come, came across this, and I don't know if anyone is aware of this, but there's an incredible material out there called Faraday fabric. It's thin, it's flexible, it has a, it's a polyester based material, but it is conductive. It is conductive through from the front to the back. Uh, I had uh, about a square meter of this stuff. There's only about a half of an ohm loss from one end to the other. It's phenomenal. And it is reflective. I, there, there's all kinds, of, most of the people use them to build um, protective clothes for themselves, to protect themselves from their cell phones or whatever. But this really is a very reflective and uh, flexible material. So I uh, covered a the inside of a, one meter parabolic re uh, photo reflector with the stuff. And that was pretty easy, spray on contact cement. Um, I probably could do it better the next time, but it's sort of a proof of concept. And to match that, I made a small tune loop feed. And the goal of this was, the one that I had on my website uh, or, or had presented was, it was, there was a lot of work involved. I wanted to build something that was almost uh, effortless. And so um, the pan is a is not cut down. It only requires two holes, half inch for the center and a quarter inch for the, uh, the feed through. Um, and you mount the saw bird to the, the, uh, the dish, the cake pan, and a little F connector, uh, SMA to F, gives you the inch standoff required for the loop feed. And so there's, this actually works out pretty well. Just make a little loop out of like 18 gauge wire or the center, center conductor of RG6 cable and solder that to the center pin, bring it around and put a little flat side on this and solder it to the other. So this was a really simple system and it's a tuned uh, antenna feed. And so this is what it looks like operational. And, um, it's easy to set up. All you need is stick a pipe in the ground. It had been really windy over the past couple of days. And so I used little tent pegs and guide it off. And I ran uh, nine or 10 hours worth of test yesterday with it. And this is, this is some ideas of what it looks like between the, the calibration cover and the, uh, the, the cold sky. I got a delta of 4.2 dB, which isn't too bad. My my system, I get between six and seven, but considering this thing really isn't a parabola, um, 
I was pleased that I got this much of a level difference between this. And this was taken early in the morning, way beyond outside of the uh, the Milky Way. So this this was a pretty good base look. And uh, as as the 40 degree um, 20 30 hour sky drifted through, I got that. And it's about one dB above cold sky. See, I don't know how this compares with the scope of the box. Um, this was, these are five minute averages. I took averages uh, parallel to what I did with my scope of the box variant so that I had a good comparison. But this is what the uh, this is what it looked like in in real time. And this is what it looked like when it was plotted. It was a lot of a lot of uh, background drift, but normalizing that out. This was like a I don't know, whatever that comes up to be, nine hours. Um, I got a contrast from cold sky peaked out about 1 point, meh, 1.1 dB, which wasn't really too bad. And uh, plotting it in my um, contour plot, it's, it's reasonable. And then I ran this through a, a three-point filter, and it looks like this. And that's really not all that bad. Like I said, I don't have a scope in the box. I may go back and deconstruct mine to compare, but this is with this little um, $60, $65 photo umbrella. And this is with my more refined system. But you know, I mean, this, this cost about eight to 10 times what that did. And this thing you can set up in like five minutes. So I was pretty pleased. I think that's about it. Yeah. So um, the question is, how well does it work? Does is this a a viable uh, solution for beginners? You you need to drill a couple holes in a cake pan. You don't need to cut it down. Two solder joints and fill up do some uh, contact cementing of uh, this reflective material into the, uh, the parabolic dish. What you think? I love it, Alex. I think that's great. And in fact, I have an umbrella already, but it's not metal. And so that could be used right away. That's kind of neat. Uh, would... I, I'm curious, uh, how many cake pans have you bought so far? Well done. <laughs> okay, umbrellas cake pans How oh i have i have a whole bunch i have a whole bunch of because i've tried different designs um see what i did this is a small this one is a small variation let me go back oh that's share it um on my systems i use a five inch five inch cake pan and i cut it down to 35 millimeters i didn't want to it's 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 kind of tedious to cut these things down so what i did was i bought a six inch this is nice this is not the fat daddy o's this is a different brand and it's real aluminum so you don't have this hard coat to take off and so all you do to turn this into a, a loop feed is drill a hole in the center for guide point and i i came up with a fairly sophisticated machine part but for the rest of the world i'd probably re i think we can get by with a piece of uh lucite tubing and some nylon spacers and just glue it together but this works out really well um so that's all it is and it's it's really fairly efficient in that the uh, the lna is is pretty much directly coupled right to the loop excellent uh, i was just thinking you were a favorite customer of the company <laughs> But now you got another I buy, company. I buy a lot of stuff to test. Um, the one, the one um, uh, photo reflector I found uh, is is a Westcott forty five inch, and it has closer to a parabolic shape than others. A lot of them seem to be flat and and then out. Um, the the point that I found, I might want to try this a couple more times. I calculated the uh, focal length should be 11 inches, and I think I have this sitting at 12 and a half. So it actually worked. It worked fairly well, and I just didn't go there. I, I because this thing has a little hose clamp on it, I could I could slip this down the uh, shaft 
and I did this in one inch steps and then in half inch steps and then found the spot which gave me the best signal noise ratio. And um, that's what I read. But how does this, does anyone know what a scope in a box, how this thing, how that works? Is this equal to that or how does it compare? Should, should be pretty close to equal if the area is equal. How how close to a parabola is it, Alex? Can you uh, do some tricks with uh, with uh, paracord to uh, stress the distress the uh, panels? There's all kinds of things that could be done to this. What I wanted to try to do was to come up with a an extremely simple minimal solution that worked, right. and then. Um, how much does the, the uh, seven millimeter steel shaft interfere? I don't know. Not but at all. The shaft, the shaft it, won't interfere. It didn't seem like it did much so, at anything. And so what I wanted there, it is open for modification or adjustment. But what I wanted to try to do is to come up with a design, a package that someone with minimal machining tool skills could build and the nice thing about it it's easy to take with you and it folds up i i wouldn't completely wrap it back up with the straps but you can fold it back down to this this level and so you can take your uh, your antenna with you you know and it's way right, too paul, paul allen has something like this at 1296 for a 23 centimeter uh, umbrella thing. It's a little bigger, but he, they've been, several people have been using that for um, 1296 moon bounce. And, but I, I just wondered because it would be relatively simple. Um, the uh, ARRL handbooks have had stressed, stressed, uh, uh, um, stressed umbrella shapes. That's a pretty deep thing. It's probably got uh, uh, your ring feet is good for that deep, for the deep dish. I, I think it, it could be stress. It it's could about be very F, I, I calculate it's right about F28. Yeah. F to D28. Right. 0.28. So, mm. but I have never seen a, a small conductive reflector. Uh, there was someone that sold maybe two meter um, uh, umbrella types, but they were like eighteen hundred dollars. This is this is a twenty meter reflector and twenty dollars twenty dollars right. reflector and twenty dollars worth of of fabric. So the whole the whole system you put together for about sixty five seventy bucks. Oh yeah, no, that's really excellent, Alex. There's no question about it. Um, I think just. A few a few strings might even improve the uh, Could be. shape just a little bit. It, Could it be. looks like it wouldn't have to be tweaked much to get to, to get what you want. I think it's great, absolutely and great. The if you get larger, you go into uh, sixteen segments, and that gets a little tedious trying to manually line that many pieces. So the one meter looks like it's uh, you know, pretty easily doable. Yeah, it's great. Well, how's that fabric? Is it very expensive? I said it's it's uh, it's I'm surprised. It's 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 about twenty dollars a meter, and I mean it's just a thin, but it it feels metallic. I mean it it you can see through it. It's almost like an ultra fine mesh, but it's it's right. not it's not a pure metal. It has a a uh, polyester base, but it is conductive. Right, right. That's amazing. Yeah, stuff. I, I had never heard of this before. And you go out and you look at you look at the comments on this stuff, and people are are making uh, drapes out of it to protect themselves from their neighbor's uh, TV satellite dish. <laughs> oh, you got to read some of the comments of what people use <laughs> this for. I'll bet it's great. Uh, uh, Looks like a good hat material. Three three um, laps around their cell phone, and a person could feel the difference in, right. in radiation. I'm, I'm sure. 
the the thing is that the uh, the optical the, the optical umbrella shapes are don't have the skin depth that at fourteen twenty. So, but this material evidently does. It does. That's I mean, it, it's as good as as aluminum. I mean, it is. It literally is like a copper nickel mesh, and I mean, it's yep. flexible, it's durable, it, it doesn't tear. So it it's a it's a very good product for for this type of application. I got another application for you. You should look at Alex, and that's uh, laptop interference into the fourteen twenty receiver. Uh, putting that yes. fabric near the laptop to shield the uh, laptop might be an interesting uh, trick. I'm definitely going to buy some for a few things that need shielding that's flexible. It's not my laptop. It's this It's this bank 24-inch monitor. It, yeah. my, my antenna will pick this thing up 50 feet away. Uh, yes, I, I'm going to buy more of this stuff. It has, I've never heard of it. Um, but I mean, there, there might be 15, 20 vendors out there on Amazon that sell this stuff, but it's, it's beautiful. What's the bigger sizes of it? Uh, you it's all about, it's all about, uh, about a meter wide and you can get it hundreds of feet long. I mean, you can, you can, it's, you can buy it at about square, square meter and, and longer. Neat stuff. <laughs> All right. I'm going to buy stock in that company. All right. Uh, anybody else got anything for Alex? Thank you, Alex. I think that's great research. Uh, that's what we want. Let's make it even cheaper. Super good. Now, just to ask the question, are there any more of those umbrellas that are, you know, a three meter umbrella or any huge umbrellas that are available? You can get up to 72. Uh, I might try one. I mean, it's it's going to it's going to wind up being about one hundred fifty, hundred sixty dollars worth of parts just to, to cover the inside. But um, Yes, you can you can get them fairly large. It might be an interesting exercise to do it. it they get pretty large, but you can get them. You can get the uh, the uh, the seventy two inch um, reflectors are are a hundred bucks. So, I, I guess the other question is, um, you know, Ted, the uh, the telescopes you got with the mesh are couldn't get twenty two gigahertz uh, because the mesh is too big. If you put this stuff on your telescopes, can you get to, I mean, will this mesh work with 22 gigahertz for masers? Yep. Should. I don't know how this stuff would weather being permanently outside. I, I have to do a test on that. Wind is the problem again. Well, also um, because of the much shorter wavelengths, uh, the accuracy of being... Uh uh, deviating yes. from a parabolic dish will probably sure. not be a good reflector right. anymore. I mean, at, oh. at 21 centimeter, you can live with um, much deviation from a parabolic form um, in the centimeters yeah. range. But, but uh, if you're down, down. at uh, 22 gigahertz, you're in the one centimeter uh, wavelength. And then the shape becomes much more critical. So why does it turn invisible at 1420? Is it just skin depth and we're using such a lower frequency than light from the sun? Oh, you mean from the, uh, for the uh, original reflectors? Exactly. Why do, why yeah, do I, they're using a, they're using a coated mylar. It's uh, uh So that's a thin coating you're saying? It's yeah, the coating so we just is need too... more skin depth? Exactly. Yeah. This fabric evidently is uh, thicker uh, than, you know, the coating is only a few molecules thick on that, uh, on the uh, reflective mylar stuff that's used. 
think think of the mylar balloons uh, that you you know fill up and says happy birthday on it that that's that kind of fabric and it it's uh it's very 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 tough the mylar is tough but the coating is only a few molecules thick uh which is just fine for for uh for light but absolutely uh the four it's almost transparent as alex has pointed out at 1420 so you need that you need that skin depth to get an adequate reflection so I, I alex you can put this fabric on the old uh, scope in a box instead of aluminum uh screening no, I wouldn't. Um, I line that with a, a thin aluminum window screen. It's the, the window screen is much more durable. This stuff is too soft. Uh, it's, it won't support, it would not support itself well in the grids. It's just going to sag. I mean, this is, this is literally soft, soft material. So it, it'll work against the solid background of these, these parabolic reflectors but it's not self-supported. So what you'd need is the screen just to hold this stuff up. And, uh, and then you've got the doubling the effort. Like, and why? Yeah, okay. 